This is the Detroit Sports Podcast Network. Hello, 313. Hello, Michigan. And if you're listening from outside the state of Michigan, thank you for listening to Travel Basketball with Gus Weaver. This is episode number 18. This show is only heard on Detroit Sports Podcast Network. I'm your host, Gus Weaver. I'm very appreciative of the Sports Podcast Network in terms of giving me this platform uh, to talk to you guys about travel basketball here in the great state of Michigan. Um, AAU-style basketball, this is something different. Um, there, there isn't a whole lot of people talking uh, youth travel basketball, uh, especially around here in the state of Michigan. So, you know, uh, my name is Gus Weaver. Like I said, my current role is I'm, I'm the director of the 313 Hot Boys uh, Travel Basketball Club based here in Detroit, and we've been around for a little over a year. Uh, we've hit the road. We've traveled to Chicago. We've traveled to South Carolina, to Tennessee, uh, numerous trips to Ohio, and all around Michigan. And, you know, one of the reasons that that I'm so excited to be able to talk travel basketball with you guys on this podcast show is because there's a lot that goes into it in terms of um, the dedication, not not only from the parents and coaches, but the kids as well, in, in terms of... Uh, showing the will to improve, um, you know, bringing something different every season, adding it into their game. So, you know, the coach's time often is overlooked. Uh, th- these guys put in numerous hours, um, countless amounts of money to make sure that their programs run smoothly. The dedication by the parents in terms of, you know, getting kids to practices, uh, getting kids on the road, uh, making accommodations with your job if you have to miss a day here miss a day there obviously the money is always an issue and it's it's just something that um it, it's a terrific industry to be in and you know once again i'm afforded the opportunity to talk about it with you guys and something that i really enjoy doing is is bringing in guests to interview on this show and uh you know so so they can give you some insight in terms of what it takes for their program to run smoothly because every program is different we cover teams that are just now getting into existence. We cover teams that are, you know, hitting the road, vying for national championships coast to coast. And every team in between. Uh, we highlight big time players. We highlight brand new players that are making noise. Uh, we, we talk about all this type of stuff. Um, you know, we, we, we've talked about the, the parental behavior before. I've had guests from all over the country on this show and we are slowly but surely uh, gathering uh, a bona fide audience for this podcast. And like I said, this is episode 18, so we've been at it a while. And, uh, you know, this is mid-September, which means NFL kickoff, you know, college football kickoff. And I'd be remiss if I didn't talk a little bit of football. Uh, first and foremost, there's a Facebook group. It's my own Facebook group. And what it is is an NFL contest, so to speak, on Facebook and uh, it, it gives the participants an opportunity to win up to four 313 Life custom hoodies during the NFL season. Uh, so if you guys are NFL fans, if you're into winning contests, uh, please check out the Facebook group. It is called the 313 Life Who You Got Pick'em Challenge. Very easy to find on Facebook. Uh, free for anyone to play. Uh, very easy to play. Not very easy to win the prize. Uh, this will be my fourth year doing it. Uh, we just started, obviously, last week with the kickoff. And we're moving forward with a full head of steam. Uh, if you guys are interested, please look me up on Facebook. Look up the group on Facebook. And if you stayed awake Monday night last week uh, to watch your beloved Lions host the New York Jets, I couldn't help but wonder if it was um, possibly the most humiliating loss that I've ever seen from the Detroit Lions. I, I know they have plenty of bad losses, uh, most of those coming on the road against teams that we all felt they they should at least have a, have a chance to, to beat. But this one last week, it, it was a little bit different. It was a little bit different considering it's the season opener. Uh, everybody's hype, you know, in Detroit. The tailgating is off the hook. You know, all preseason, they, you know, the Lions leadership say, oh, don't worry about the, the piss poor preseason. Because they're not showing everything. Just wait till regular season. And we'll, we'll take everything out the bag. And we'll show you what, what type of team we are. Well, come to find out, these guys were holding nothing back. 
They looked terrible Monday. Um, and if there was a game on this schedule that I thought was a gimme, it was this home opener, Monday Night Football, against a rookie quarterback, Sam Darnold, and the lowly New York Jets, who, you know, if you stack their talent pool up against other teams in the NFL, the Jets don't exactly add up, especially to be a 31-point a uh, d- differential on the road with a rookie quarterback. Now, I went to the East Coast, and I watched this rookie quarterback in the preseason against the Redskins, and Sam Darnold didn't really impress me. But... Lo and behold, Monday night, oh, he impressed the whole world. So, once again, possibly, possibly the most humiliating loss that I've ever seen the Detroit Lions take. And I'm hoping they can right the ship as they travel to the Bay Area this weekend to take on Jimmy Garoppolo and the San Francisco 49ers. Uh, Last week, Mr. Rocky Black, director from the Michigan Warriors, uh, was my guest. And we previewed his big-time league starting up. He's, it's a joint league hosted by Michigan Playmakers, Michigan Warriors. All games are played right here in Livonia, Michigan. This league goes until, I believe, uh, the third weekend of October. But, you know, one thing that Rocky and I talked about were the abundance of talent uh, that this league brings in. I believe this is the third year that, that this league has been in existence. And it gets bigger and bigger and bigger every fall season. So that's something that I want to touch on. Uh, you know, on this show, I do want to look at, at the different grade divisions. I want to point out a few teams. I will mention every team that's locked and loaded for this league from the third and fourth grade division all the way up to junior varsity. So if you have a team in this league, believe me, they're going to get a shout out. And uh, if, if I have any knowledge of them or or a particular player, I'll also give those guys a shout out. You know, that that's something else that when, when I promo this, this, this show, on the social outlets, I ask you guys to, to let me know if you have tryouts coming up as a, as a team. If you've got a hot player, uh, if, if you guys are on a win streak, if you're, if you're going to a big tournament, I'd like to know all of that so I can give you a personal shout out at the end of this show. Um, Rocky Black last week, not only do they, do they have this league starting, but he also spoke about uh, the movie that, that had a screening here in Detroit. I believe they're screening it in L.A., this weekend, but him along with Wendell Green from the Michigan Playmakers um, really put on a a good fall league, and it, it's probably the cream of the crop in terms of fall leagues around here in the state of Michigan. So I would say let's look right into it, starting with the young kids. A third and fourth grade combo division features the following teams. All Ohio Red, which is a bona fide AAU club out of Ohio. Uh, these guys are no joke. They play, uh, you know, top-notch competition all year long. So it's very good to see all Ohio Red, third and fourth grade, coming up to Livonia every Saturday. Uh, Antelope Elite is another program that, that I have personal experience with. Chicago Lockdown, Flint Affiliation, Michigan Goonies, Michigan Mavericks, Michigan Playmakers, Michigan Threat, Michigan Warriors. Motor City Chargers, Motor City Thunder, the New Command Kings, Sky's the Limit, and Team Legion. Uh, if you follow this program at all, some of these teams uh, that I just mentioned, uh, we've talked about before in terms of Antelope Elite, a very well-coached uh, athletic guys playing for that organization. Uh, Flint Affiliation, they come down here for the Livonia stuff all the time. Very good organization. Michigan Goonies has continued to impress me. Uh, making noise at all age levels. Obviously, the Michigan Playmakers, Michigan Warriors, they'll be in this thing. They'll be competing. The Michigan Threat, um, you know, we talked about Motor City Thunder numerous times on this program. They're a very solid team out of Inkster, Michigan. So this third and fourth grade uh, division is loaded. And, you know, if I had to take a look at this right now, I'll tell you who I'm intrigued by. I'm intrigued by the Chicago Lockdown team because I don't, I'm not really sure, uh, you know, how these guys travel, what what their style of play is. And when I go and look at these teams, and I will be going checking out all of these teams, you know, that's what I want to see. I want to see how their fan base travels. I want to see their uniforms. I want to see, you know, their color scheme. I want to see how well coached they are. What type of offenses do they run? Uh, do they full press, you know, on, on defense? I, I need to see all of that so I can come back on this very show and give you guys 
uh, my insight and, and tell you, you know, what I think about these guys. So I'm very intrigued to see the Chicago lockdown. And uh, I'm intrigued to see on this level what the Michigan playmakers do. Because normally they, they're young guys, um, they're, they're guard driven, quality backcourts, even at such young ages. So I will definitely keep my eyes on Chicago lockdown, Michigan playmakers, and I want to see the new command kings in the third and fourth grade level of the Michigan Playmakers, Michigan Warriors Fall League. And there's something to be said for the, this Fall League because, like I said, all games are played, for the most part, under one roof. And Livonia Churchill's parking lot is packed, and it will be jam-packed every Saturday uh, until October 22nd, I believe. So if you're riding down Newburgh and you, on a Saturday and, and you see Livonia Churchill parking lot jam-packed, it's because of this fall league that we're discussing right now. Michigan Playmakers, Michigan Warriors. Let's take a look at the fifth grade division. Um, quality teams here as well. Uh, teams that I have personal experience with and teams that we've talked about on this show. Let's get right into it. Ann Arbor Storm, Black Bottom, Common Bond, the D. Rice Elite, F.A. Playmakers, The Family, Michigan Mavericks, Michigan Playmakers, Michigan Warriors, MWA Elite, New Command Kings, Quest, Sky's the Limit, SMAC, Southfield Elite, and Team Legion. Uh, once again, you know, we've talked about these teams uh, more than once. And normally when we discuss teams, it's because they're going out and winning tournaments or they're going out and finishing runner-up. Um, so anytime you get a mention on here, you know, other than, hey, they're competing in this tournament, it's a good thing for your squad. A couple of teams in this fifth grade division that I definitely will keep my eyes on is uh, Common Bond. Very familiar with those guys. Uh, FA Playmakers. Familiar with them. Um, sky's the Limit. Like like I said, Sky's the Limit really came on strong about midway through last AAU travel season. And they've just been improving ever since. I don't know who this Southfield Elite team is, but very interested in seeing those guys. But if I had to put my money on, on one team in this fifth grade division, it definitely would have to be with the family, um, quality guys over there, quality coaching, always have tremendous guard play, no matter uh, the, the age group for the family. So, you know, that that's the team that I'm looking to, to come out of this fifth grade division uh, is it, the family. I, I know a lot of those guys over there. I know a lot of the kids and um, – Believe me, I'm not making this pick because I know them. I'm making this pick because I know how they ball. And they ball hard. The family is tough. The family is talented. Give me the family to come out of this fifth grade division. Once again, if you guys are rolling down Newburgh Road on a Saturday and you see Livonia Churchill's parking lot jam-packed, it's because of this very fall league. Let's take a look at the sixth grade, class of 2025. Uh, here's the teams. 313 Hot Boys. D. Rice Elite. DSO Elite, Gladiators, Michigan Playmakers, Michigan Warriors, Team Legion, The Academy, The Panthers, Tri-County Twisters. Three teams that I'm looking at uh, doing some serious damage in this division. Uh, first is Team Legion. They are led by a tremendous young ball player. Uh, I'm not going to mention his name uh, because I don't have his, his parents okay to mention his name, but he knows who he is. Team Legion has one heck of a talent. Uh, playing in their backcourt. So I'm definitely looking for him to make some noise. Uh, the Gladiators out of Detroit. These guys are, you know, if you follow them on social media, they stay in the gym. They stay working. They were already a quality club. Uh, you know, they're putting in the extra work to become even better as a ball club. So I'm looking for the Gladiators to do some damage. And I'm looking for my young guys, the 313 Hot Boys. This is their first time in a league uh, such as this. So I'm looking for them to... Uh, Here's the reality of the situation. When you're a brand new team and you jump into a league that's full of competition, you're going to take some lumps. So I know my 313 Hot Boys will take some lumps in this league, but it will pay off, you know, towards the end of the league. We'll see improvement amongst the, the players, amongst the team. Um, you know, the coach will obviously be more familiar with them after coaching them two games, you know, every Saturday. So I'm, I'm very intrigued to see what my 313 Hot Boys are looking like. And those guys, I will mention their names uh, because I have permission to mention their names. 313 Hot Boys 2025 team is led by uh, big-time guard Stevie Elam. 
a uh, big time point guard, Lamar Echols Jr. And a stretch four that can kind of do it all goes by the name of Alex Perez. So I'm looking for those three guys to kind of carry the torch uh, amongst the other kids on the team that don't have the same experience level. But that's why we're getting in this league. So these guys can have that experience level. And when we come back next year, we'll have a team full of veterans that have been there, done that. So I'm looking for 313 Hot Boys, the Gladiators, and Team Legion to really do some damage at this 6th grade. 2025 level as we look at the 2024 level uh you know not as many teams as normal but the quality of teams is ridiculously good so let's look at them 313 hot boys antelope elite bates fundamentals great lakes warriors michigan playmakers nwse elite and we got one team playing up the reach dream team reach dream team let, let me start with these guys uh, national champions at the 2025 level this league they're playing up at the 2024 level which is something that they often do uh, these guys have have the chemistry uh, they've been around in terms of together for a very long time uh, great coaching and just a great program if you're involved with reach dream team you know how those guys roll they go coast to coast and beat the brakes off of most people they play so i wish them guys luck playing up in in the seventh grade division in here uh, Bates Fundamentals, a very intriguing 7th grade team because I'm not sure what their 2024 guys are bringing to the table. Everybody knows Bates Fundamentals because of the, the big time guy in that organization, Imani Bates, um, you know, ranked number one at, at his grade in the whole nation. But he's not on this 7th grade team, so I'm interested to see what type of talent they have on the 7th the grade team uh, no matter what. I'm sure those guys will be ready to play because they get, get great training and, and great coaching over at Bates Fundamentals. Uh, another team on here, Great Lakes Warriors, led by a couple of studs, a uh, quality program. I, I can give my man Donnie Watts, a.k.a. Hezzy Mello, a shout-out right here because I know his people, and he's one of the leaders of the Great Lakes Warriors. And anytime my hot boys lock up with them, it's always a great game. It's full of individual matchups um, that – that will really keep your attention on the game. Uh, Antelope Elite, a crazy athletic team that, that I'm really intrigued to see what improvements they've made from last season to this season. I haven't seen those guys in action since we saw them at this very fall league last year. My team, the 313 Hot Boys, I have big expectations, uh, you know, for this league. Last year, it was our first time getting into it, and you know, from a 2024 level, and we took lumps. We won games, but we took lumps. Uh, this year, I'm looking for my hot boys to come away with a trophy from this seventh grade uh, division. And, um, you know, obviously none of these games will be easy. I just named off the teams. Crazy talent, crazy coaching. Uh, nothing will be easy. But I am looking for my hot boys to do some damage. And they are led by a host of players. Uh, we can start out with the cream of the crop, Mr. Derek Miller. If you guys listen to this program, if you follow the 313 Hot Boys 2024 squad, you know Derek Miller, a.k.a. D. Mills, is the real deal. He's hit some game winners for us. Uh, hard to keep this boy from scoring buckets. So along with Derek Miller, you have James Weaver and Luke Westerdale in the backcourt. Uh, you know, James Weaver is the kid that I've talked about in terms of used to be a defensive specialist. His defense is still on point, but he's incorporated crazy offensive game. So I, I'm interested to see how James Weaver, a.k.a. Big Play JCJ, uh, brings his improvements in the offseason to the fall league. Luke Westerdale, flat out one of the best shooters in the country, and I'll stack him up against anybody. That's a quick rundown of my 313 Hot Boys. Of course, we have more players, and you will hear about the other players on this squad moving forward as we keep a we will keep an eye on this league. And every week, I will report back to you guys. Who was the stud player? Uh, who was the stud team? Who went 2-0 this week? So that's a quick rundown, seventh grade teams right now. If I had to call a championship, give me 313 Hot Boys and Great Lakes Warriors to battle it out in the final of this one. And, you know, like I said, man, it, th this is such a fun time, not only to be a fan of, of youth travel basketball, but sports in general. You got college football kicking off. You got the NFL kicking off. You got youth basketball. It, it's a good time to be a fan of sports right here in Michigan. Let's look at the 8th grade division. Uh, these will be the 2023 athletes. And let's take a look. Antelope Elite, Common Bond, 
D Rice Elite, Flint Affiliation, Great Lakes Warriors, Michigan Playmakers, Michigan Warriors, MWA Elite. Tough, tough teams in this one, including MWA Elite, Flint Affiliation, uh, Michigan Playmakers, tough at this age group. Great Lakes Warriors, very tough at this age group. All of these teams have bona fide AAU talent. I'm keeping my eye on the Great Lakes Warriors and MWA Elite at the 2023 level. Uh, I am a fan. I, I flat out be honest. I'm a fan of the Great Lakes Warriors organization. Um, you know, the way they handle business, very professional. Uh, I'm a fan of, of their uniform scheme. I really like these guys. And this 2023 team is legit. So I'm calling for the Great Lakes Warriors, MWA, to, to kind of battle it out in this eighth grade division that is full. I mean, full of talent. And uh, like I said, if you guys aren't doing anything on a Saturday, come by Livonia Churchill and uh, get some of this this travel youth, AAU-style basketball. It, it's, it's good for your soul, man. <laughs> Please believe me. Let's look at the JV level. Ann Arbor Basketball Academy uh, is entering three teams, a Navy, a Red, and a White team at the JV level. Uh, we had Jordan Ebbs. He's the director, coach of AABA. Uh, we had him as a guest uh, maybe a month or so ago, and he had plenty to bring to the table. It, it, if you're a parent and your kid is playing for AABA under the direction of Jordan Ebbs, consider yourself lucky. He's a guy that, that knows basketball uh, front and back, up and down, so either one of these teams that make crazy noise, AABA has made crazy noise all summer. So I'm I'm definitely not looking for that to uh, reverse jumping into this fall league. I'm looking for big things out of the AABA squad. You have Catholic Central, you have Flint's Finest, Go Mode, King, Lake Orion, Reach, and Send It. We also talked about Go Mode uh, before. Uh, they they've got some tremendous athletes and in, in, on the Go Mode team. But they're a young program, and I'm kind of looking for them to prove themselves throughout the ranks uh, as we move forward. And then Reach, on, on this list, Reach Reach is talented. Reach is tough. So, you know, Reach and AABA battled uh, more than once uh, this summer at, at various tournaments. So I'm kind of looking for those two to square off in the championship of this one. Because, you know, it, it, once you start looking at tournaments, and, and I look at plenty, Sometimes I feel like that's my life. <laughs> Looking at tournaments, analyzing the teams, you know, consistently all summer, AABA and Reach at the JV level were making the championship game or, um, you know, winning the championship or finishing runner-up. So it, it, it's just crazy. When, when those two are in something together, that's who I'm looking to come out, one of those two. Uh, let's look at the varsity level. I'm going to breeze through this varsity level. The varsity level is where you get some of the high school kids they come in and they're taking their shot um, in, in terms of a AAU style tournament. So let's let's take a quick look at it. Varsity teams, like I said, I'm going to breeze right through this. In in the fall leagues, these are always uh, the more populated divisions. So let's take a look. AABA, Ann Arbor Huron, Bloomfield Hills, Brighton, Catholic Central, Clarkston, De La Salle, Farmington, Flint's Finest, John Glenn, King. Lake Orion, Livonia Churchill, Livonia Stevenson, Loyola, MWA Elite, New Haven, North Farmington, Northville, River Rouge, Rochester Adams, Roseville, Seaholm, South Lake, Southfield Christian, Troy, Troy Athens, U Prep, right out of downtown Detroit, West Bloomfield, Wyandotte, and Ypsilanti Lincoln. That is a tough, tough division to win it's a tough division to even come in the final four when it's all said and done so all of those high school clubs all of those travel clubs that i just named uh best of luck to you guys that is a tough one to win uh, you're looking at over 20 teams at the high school varsity division of this fall league once again shout out uh wendell green shout out rocky black uh michigan playmakers michigan warriors for putting this league together i just gave you a rundown of every single division that's competing in this tournament. Uh, if you're not doing anything on a Saturday, come and check it out. I'll be there just about every Saturday trying to gather all the necessary information so I can come back and, and give you guys a, a well-thought-out podcast show. Now, if you guys are familiar, if you listen, you know my favorite part of the show is, is the shout-out portion. After we discuss the meat and potatoes, 
Uh, we always get into a shout out portion. This week, I'm shouting out the Miss TV camp and six, count them, six of my hot boys taking place, uh, going to participate, going to see where they stack up amongst some of the better competition throughout the country, definitely in the Midwest. This camp is being held in Westfield, Indiana. It's the Mish TV camp. And from start to finish, it, it's, it's, a, it's a great thing. They, they give the kids highlight videos. You, know, you, you literally, you come, you sign up, you get your uniform, and they put you on a team, and then it's team games. You know, obviously they do a, a pre-camp speech, uh, which is beneficial not only for the kids, but for the parents to listen to. And after that, you're on your team and you're running. You will get a chance to play against some of your teammates in, in our situation, considering we're sending six boys down there. Those six boys getting shout out right now. Uh, 2025 players, Alex Perez and Stevie Elam. From our 2024 squad, we have Alex Gillum, Luke Westerdale, James Weaver, and Derek D. Mills Miller. I wish all of you boys the best of luck at the Mitch TV camp this weekend. Please go down there and ball hard the 313 way. Hey guys, you just listened to episode 18 of Travel Basketball with Gus Weaver. Thank you for tuning in, and I'll talk to you next week.